Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Um, in today's video, we're going to be talking about um, starting to talk about the compounds esters. So, introducing this idea of these these family of hydrocarbons. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how they're put together um, and what their structure is like, and a little um, a little brief introduction to how we would name them. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so an S. So in the um, so um, so far we've or well, more recently we've been looking at um, two new families, or uh, well, one new family and revisiting another. Okay, alkanoic acids and alkanols. Now, part of the reason that we're doing that is that we know um, that when we react these substances together, they form a new type of compound called an ester. Okay, so when an alkanoic acid and an alkanol react, we form an ester plus water. Okay. And what I'm also going to do to show you to start off with is that it's an equilibrium reaction. So if, for example, I, let's say I've, I've got you know, a compound which is an alkanoic acid. Okay, so it's got some, some kind of group over here. Maybe it's a, many carbons, maybe it's a hydrogen or, or something in between. And I've got an alkanol. So I've got an OH group. Um, I've got, it's attached to a carbon group that then has some other, you know, anything else attached. Maybe this is a hydrogen or maybe it's something else. Okay, that when these two things react together, that what happens is that um, we get these atoms okay, um, being removed and we are connecting the rest of the molecule together. So we've got this part which originally came from the acid and then the rest which originally came from the alkanol and then plus Water. Now I'm going to write it in this form to kind of to illustrate how this is the stuff. This the, these atoms that are that make up that water molecule were the ones that were originally between here. Okay, so this so this is um, so this kind of compound with this sort of um, functional group. Okay, so this this bit in the middle here between two carbons is called an ester functional group. Um, esters are also more formally known as alkyl alkanoates. Okay, we won't um, we won't use that particular terminology because it's not really it's not the language of the syllabus and it's also less familiar. But technically, that's how we would call it, and that will also kind of give us some information when we think about the name. Okay, so what I'm what I'm going to do just to to kind of illustrate how this works is I've got a little quick little kind of demonstration. Okay. So what I have over here, okay, so I have written out the structures of an, an, an example of an alkanoic acid and an alkanol. So I have propanoic acid over here. Remember from our previous video, we looked at this idea that um, we count this, so this is our alkanoic acid group, our carboxyl group, that we have three carbons, including that one, which is prop, and so it's a member of this propanoic acid. Okay, over here I've got two carbons, it's an alkanol, it's got the OH hydroxyl group, so it's ethanol. Now, when I'm combining these two substances together to make an ester, okay, so what I'm getting is I'm getting these atoms connecting together to form a water molecule, and in doing so, what happens is, it's like if I take this, and then now, those two molecules are connected together. So propanoic acid and ethanol. Now, this new substance has the name of ethyl propanoate. Um, now, we'll go into the naming in a little bit more detail in the next, in, in the next video. But this idea that the ethyl came from the ethanol and the propanoate came from acid. Okay, so it came from this came from the acid, this came from the alkanol. Okay, and so that's how the name got put together. So we started with our two separate substances and then now they are connected together, forming our ester functional group in the middle. Okay, let's have another look, look at a, a quick a next example. Okay, so over here so we've got butanoic acid, one, two, three, four carbons with our carboxylic acid group over here. We've got a, an alkanol which has one carbon, so it's methanol. 
Okay, so butanoic acid and methanol. Um, and so then, as before, I'm getting this part, which is going to come together to form our water molecule. Okay, and so then our two molecules are connecting together to form this substance. Okay, and the way that we would name that, the first part coming from the alkanol, methyl, the second part coming from our acid, butanoate. Okay, so this ester is called methyl butanoate, coming from methanol and butanoic acid as its original um, substances. All right, now let's have a, a, a quick look at it from a different perspective. Let's look at how we can look at the structure of an ester and identify which substances it came from. Okay, now I'm not going to give you the name of this one at the moment, but we just, we just want to focus on the structure that we have here. Okay, so we know that when we form an ester, that we do so by removal of a water molecule. So that is, the water molecule is going to be put back into this joint where my finger is pointing at the moment. Okay, so what I have here is now I can imagine taking it and cutting it at this point and separating out those two components. Okay, and then I can add in a water molecule across to those open ends now. Okay, so I'm going to add an OH over onto this side and I'm going to add an H to this side. Okay, because that's how it kind of, that's what, where it, it splits and comes together. Okay, and so now just just as a quick point before we go on and, and we'll look at the names of these two components. Okay, that the the reason uh, that I have, so I've, in the ester this is the oxygen that is is kept and this oxygen isn't. Okay, so the oxygen that comes from the alcohol is the one that's kept, and not the one from the acid. Now in in terms of the HSE syllabus that that's not actually really necessary information to know. Um, it is knowable. We have been able, scientists have been able to actually um, alter the structure of both of these these substances so that we can tag which oxygen is detected in the, the final product, and we've determined that it's this one. Okay. So now, just having a quick look at our our two components, so that then we can work out how to name it. Okay. So looking at this, so we've got a an alkanoic acid which has two carbons, so it's F, and so it's we give it the suffix uh, anoic acid. Okay, remember that this is also known as acetic acid. Okay, over here we've got one, two, three carbons. Okay, so it's propanol. Now we can also specify that it is one propanol because that OH group comes on carbon number one. So we can then go from there and identify, okay, so this should be called propyl ethanoate. If I wanted to be super precise, or be really much more specific, I could say it's one propyl ethanoate to show that it's connected this way rather than the, the propanol being kind of connected sideways. Um, or I could also refer to it as acid, acetic acid and so call it propyl acetate, okay, which is often more how we would actually refer to something like this. We tend to go with the, this name of acetic acid because it's more commonly understood. Okay, so in this video we've talked through this process of um, what introducing what an ester is um, and how esters are formed and then looking at their structures and going through um, some of their names. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.